remember some years ago, uh, I was reading in uh, Tactical Knives, uh, interesting article by uh, Michael uh, Janich of how he came up with the uh, Ronin model knife, which uh, has come to be the Spider Crow Ronin 2 um, and the Yojimbo. Uh, when he first worked with Mike Snowdy, he had, had referenced in the article how uh, talking to Snowdy, this is before Snowdy was the Snowdy we all know and love now. Um, he uh, said an interesting thing, how the uh, maker had, had uh, kind of reached in his head and, and pulled out the knife and made it a physical manifestation of his, uh, his design, what he was looking for. And uh, recently a maker sent me a knife, Kyle uh, Bevion, I hope I said his name right, um, which was kind of a similar thing, although I didn't ask for the design, I just, uh, but it ended out to be something that I was, uh, uh, had been thinking of in a while, for a long time. I, I got a, this was some years back, um, a Benchmade model number 180, uh, which has a couple interesting things for a production knife. It's a tapered tang. It's got uh, wood handles, stabilized, D2, it's a McHenry and Williams uh, design. Uh, you know, relatively thin grind, you know, um, around 20 thousandths for a production knife. 20 thousandths behind the edge and, you know, 15, 20 degree angle around that. Uh, one of my favorite knives. I was thinking for a long time, the, I mean, the handle fits me, I've got, you know, medium-sized hands with small fingers, so uh, I can I can do with relatively thin, thin, small uh, handles. And, and this one, it's also got a nice, nice taper, palm swell, very, very handy knife. Excellent jimping on the top. It's one of my favorite knives. I was I was thinking long time. The sheath isn't too nice, but it's it's doable. Um, I mean it's it's not a bad sheath, but it's not uh, it's not the best. It could be better. But I was thinking a long for a long time. This, it would be very nice if if I could have a a neck knife, just a little shorter blade. You know, this blade's three and three quarters inch. You know, I was thinking uh, a little bit of a shorter blade, um, similar s style handle, tapered tang. Um, I even made a a, 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 a neck knife uh, sheath for this, but it's just it's just a little bit too heavy, a little bit too bulky too big. Um, and then I've another two two knives I picked up at pawn shops is this this Buck Mentor and and uh, an old uh, Buck 118 from the 70s I think I did some dating on it. It's got to do with these these lines and how these spacers are set up. So it's around the 70s something. So I think this is um, 440C, the steel. This is the sheath. It's got a very, and plus the sheath dated it all. Got an over, over uh, button sheath. And, and so I think this is 440C. I think this is 420HC. Two of my favorite knives, but they have the upswept, upswept type of uh, blade, which is one of my my favorite blade styles. I like. There's not that many styles of blade I don't like, but 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 uh, it, it's it's very uh, can come in very handy when when using a knife. It, it just seems you seem to cut, and then you have like a little bit of extra extra real estate to keep on keep on cutting. It, it takes a little bit to get to use used to though. But the knife that Kyle sent me, which I 
made into a neck knife. I guess he was meaning for it to be a belt knife or a, a pocket fixed uh, sheath knife. Um, here's the Kydex. Excellent Kydex. You can, I mean, just retention is awesome. It just comes out easy as can be. No problems there. It's even curved, if you can see. It's bent a little to, to help it be on your, your, your belt or your, your waist. I guess even in your pocket it can curve to, to your body. But this is the knife that, that, that Kyle sent me. And I've, I've uh, sharpened it. It's ABL, I think 63, 64 from Peters, or maybe 62, I can't remember. Um, but it's got an awesome kyber, uh, carbon fiber. I've never seen carbon fiber like this before. But carbon fiber scales, it's almost like a wood grain carbon fiber. Blue liners, tapered tang, mirrored, mirrored finish. He's got the hammer tone, his signature hammer tone finish at the top, which is excellent. Awesome for indexing because you know exactly where you're at on the blade. If you're grabbing, you, you, you know when you're getting to what part of it. It, it's, it just it looks incredibly cool also. Uh, it's got a sh sharpened sharpening notch, which is incredibly neat. Oh. The uh, the guard, the way the guard goes also is is angled just right, so when you're sharpening, you don't you, you can get all the way down here and it doesn't get in the way. Um, also, the the uh, handle is is little back for uh, is is little back, so you can get a little pinch grip and 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 hold it like this. It's a very very nice knife. It's got the upswept blade. It has an interesting grind where it's it's thicker, thinner, and then thicker. When the knife came to me, it was about 15 to 17 up here, 10 down, 10 thousandths behind here, and then it thickened up again to to 15, 20 thousandths down there, 17 thousandths maybe, I don't know, um, at about a 15, 15, 20 degree angle. I think 15 degrees per side, I think. I uh, might be wrong. But, so I, I reground it a little just to make it, because it's, it's got a nice hollow grind. With the, almost a full full height hollow grind. And uh, I reground it a little to make it just so it would sit flat on the stone. And I could sharpen it like that. Um, so I thinned it out a little bit so it's now about ten thousandths up here, five thousandths in the middle, ten thousandths at the, in the heel. But it's kind of like a reverse uh, Michael Price grind that, uh, that Ed Fowler was so uh, fond of. Where the, Ed, the Michael Price grind is different. It's thin, thick, thin. So, but very nice knife, just excellent blue liners. You can't even tell that there's anything. I mean, it's just, it's, it's got this large choil for your index finger and a guard, so it's not going anywhere. I mean, I've, I've you know, I've got little small hands, but, but I can get all, I can get all four fingers on the, on the handle, no problem. Excellent, excellent work. Uh, it's only like the uh, third, third custom knife that I've uh, dealt with and handled, but it's nice having a knife that you don't have to sharpen when you get it. It, it comes incredibly high high sharpness, and I mean, there's, you don't really have to do anything to it. I did something, I just wanted to experiment with the steel, and that's why I kind of zero ground it and see how, 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 how much performance I can get out of it. Um, but it's, it's, uh, I see why people like the steel. Also, it's ABL and the high hardness is uh, it's it's very nice. It, it does not with this mirror finish on here. It doesn't really um, doesn't really uh, tarnish. I've got it all sweaty. I accidentally take it in the shower, uh, wore it in the shower a whole bunch of times. Not a drop of rust. Sharpens like a dream. Just I mean like. Just no minimal burring if you do overgrind it. It comes right off. This sharpens just just like straight razor sharp. You know, 
like hair whittling. It, it, it's, it, you touch the hair to it and it just pops off. You know, it's like a, a hair hanging test four or five. And it's, just, it's remarkably easy to do. You don't really have to do anything, any, any special techniques or tricks, or you can just sharpen it and it, it just comes uh, really nice. So Kyle, you did a really good job on this. Love the knife. Thank you again. Um, that's the video.